Hey guys, I wanted to talk a little bit today about the stomach and kind of how the stomach works, but really focusing on things at a microscopic level. So kind of really zooming in and looking at the different chemicals and hormones that the stomach releases and how those affect how the stomach works and digests um, uh, materials, okay? So just as a quick little review, the stomach um, is connected to the esophagus, and the job of the stomach is really to break things down. Not much absorption occurs in the stomach, and the overall goal of the stomach is to turn a bolus of food into a substance called chyme. It's like this, I don't know, liquid, soupy-like stuff that then the small intestine will further digest and absorb its nutrients, okay? So just as a quick little review, the shape of the stomach kind of looks like this. Okay, so here, up here is the esophagus. Let me kind of label some of this stuff. Okay, so here we have the esophagus up top. Esophagus, that leads into the stomach right here. So this is the stomach. The stomach then connects to the first part of the small intestine, which is called the duodenum, which is right here. Duodenum. Okay. Now, um, you know, a couple parts of the stomach. Here's the fundus of the stomach up top. This big curve over on the lateral side, that's the greater curvature. The lesser curvature, we're going to have the, uh, the cardiac sphincter that separates the stomach from the esophagus, the pyloric sphincter that separates the stomach from the, the duodenum. Okay. So um, now imagine what we did is we did a coronal section of the structure so we could see what's inside, see what's going on inside the stomach. All right, now things are going to look like this. You're going to notice that the stomach has a pretty thick wall, and the wall of the stomach is primarily composed of smooth muscle. So this is the muscularis. It's really thick in the stomach. So here you're going to have the wall of the esophagus. That's going to converge into the cardiac sphincter, kind of like that. And then the thick wall of the stomach, which is located here, which then creates the um, pyloric sphincter there. Okay, there's the pyloric sphincter, and then we'll have the wall of the small intestine, which isn't nearly as thick. Okay, now um, in red, I'm gonna kind of color in this wall of the stomach because as we remember that this is primarily muscularis. I mean, you have all three layers of the alimentary canal, but it's mostly smooth muscle in the stomach. Um, the smooth muscle comes in three different types. You're gonna have um, circular muscle fibers, longitudinal muscle fibers, and also a third type, which are oblique muscle fibers. And those three kind of orientations of muscle fibers really allow the stomach to do a lot of things to manipulate that food. It allows the stomachs to contract, propel the food down um, through peristalsis towards the duodenum. It allows it to grind it up, mix up the stuff, food with all that the um, gastric juices that the stomach is going to secrete and it even just kind of squeezes that food to help kind of break it apart. So the stomach does a really nice job of manipulating and kind of breaking down um, all that food. Okay. Now, what else do we need to talk about? Okay, so the walls of the stomach are really thick. Now, what I want to focus on, is I want to focus on the inner lining of the stomach because this inner lining of the stomach, represented by this black line right here, represents um, a very specialized epithelium, which is going to secrete a bunch of different uh, chemicals and hormones, which um, um, not only protect the stomach, but also digest food. Okay, so let's zoom in on a little, the little portion of this lining right about there. So if we're going to zoom in on a little portion of the lining there and redraw it, we would find that the inner line in the stomach uh, is composed of an inner wall and a bunch of like tiny little dead-ended caves. These dead-ended caves are called gastric pits. Okay. So this is called, these are called gastric pits. Here is the inside of the stomach, so this right here. And then all of this material and tissue here, this represents the epithelium that makes the inner lining of the stomach. Okay. Now there's going to be a couple of different cells that make up the inside of these gastric pits. One of them, um, one type of cell, which are going to be represented by this uh, orange dash, these cells are columnar epithelial cells 
that make up the inner lining of the stomach that faces the inside of the stomach right here. So not necessarily the inner walls of the pits. They do compose the neck of these pits towards the inner wall of the stomach, but um, mostly these orange cells are going to be limited to the regions right here that I've drawn. Okay, These orange cells are called mucosal cells. And these mucosal cells are going to secrete mucus. The purpose of this mucus is to protect the stomach from the very acid that it secretes. So the pH of the stomach is super acidic, pH is like 2 to 3. Now that's strong enough to break down anything, like even nails, if you leave nails in you know acidic environment long enough. Well, we don't want that acid to digest the wall of the stomach itself, so we need to protect it. Well, these mucosal cells are going to secrete this mucus that's represented by these squiggly lines. And the mucus literally protects the epithelium and the muscles that are um, deep to the epithelium from all of the acid that makes up the stomach itself. Okay? And also occurs when there's a break in um, this mucus. It's most often occur uh, caused by a bacteria called um, H. pylori. And a bacterial infection occurs when bacteria consume this mucus that exposes a little part of the uh, epithelium to the, uh, the acidic environment, which creates a sore, which is an ulcer. 95% okay? of ulcers are caused by an infection of this bacterium, H. pylori. Um, it's readily resolved with antibiotics. Okay? Another cell that you're going to find inside of the gastric pits, these are going to make up the walls of the gastric pits, are called parietal cells. Parietal cells are going to be located all along here and they're going to make up the walls of the gastric pits, kind of like that. Right? So you're going to have a bunch of these parietal cells. They're also columnar epithelial cells. And these guys, they, their job is to produce hydrochloric acid. That's their main job. They also produce intrinsic factor, which is a chemical which allows us to absorb vitamin B12. Okay, but their main job is to produce hydrochloric acid. Okay, so HCl. And so these parietal cells are producing all this hydrochloric acid, and that creates the very acidic environment of the stomach. Okay, so that's what makes the stomach so acidic with all this HCl that's being secreted. And that hydrochloric acid is going to help us break down basically every type of organic molecule. Okay, another cell that is going to be located in the walls of the gastric pits are called chief cells. Chief. Cell. And chief cells, what they do is that they are going to secrete an inactive enzyme called pepsinogen. So I'll draw this. We're going to have all these chief cells which are spread all around and these chief cells are secreting a bunch of pepsinogen. Pepsinogen in its raw form doesn't really do much of anything. But when pepsinogen is um, mixed with hydrochloric acid, pepsinogen is converted into its active form called pepsin. So we have all this pepsinogen, which is being released. When pepsinogen mixes with hydrochloric acid, it then turns into pepsin. So hydrochloric acid plus pepsinogen produces pepsin. P-E-P-S-I-N. So now we have all this pepsin, which is now secreted into the stomach. This pepsin is going to help us digest proteins. Okay, and that's kind of how it works. One last cell that makes up the walls of the gastric pits. I'll draw these in green. These guys, oh, that looks about the same as the blue, but you guys can see the difference. Okay, so in green, that's where we'll have gastroendocrine cells. Now with a name like that, we know it has something to do with the endocrine system, and that's exactly what happens. These guys are going to release hormones directly into the tissues of the stomach wall. These are gastroendocrine cells, and these guys are going to release a bunch of different hormones which control digestion. Hormones like gastrin. Okay, gastrin increases the production of 
hydrochloric acid. It's also going to secrete hormones like serotonin. Serotonin in the stomach has the job of increasing contraction of the muscularis or the, the stomach muscles. Not the stomach muscles, but the, the um, smooth muscle in the wall this is of the stomach. It secretes a whole bunch of other hormones. I don't want you to worry too much about the specifics of those, but really these gastroendocrine cells are crucial in controlling the activity of the stomach uh, during digestion. Okay. So that's an overview of kind of what happens in the stomach after, you know, the stomach does its magic, it mixes all this stuff up, all these gastric juices, right? So the culmination of everything kind of emerges from the gastric pits, those are called gastric juices. It mixes all those gastric juices with the food and eventually that food is converted into chyme and that chyme is then squeezed into the duodenum where it's further digested and eventually those nutrients are absorbed, okay? So thanks.